Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, where we explore the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in video games. Now, I've already covered several Sonic CD prototypes, as well as the final game, in a Lost Bits video. And if you haven't seen that one yet, I highly recommend you check it out. Anyways, recently the Epic Gamers over at the Cutting Room Floor and the Hidden Palace have been dumping a ton of new Sonic prototypes. Among them, two from Sonic CD. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at these new prototypes to see what they kept and removed from the final release. Before we jump in, a big thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring a portion of this video. These days, more than ever is it important to protect your privacy on the internet. If you're like me and aren't interested in ISPs, governments, and this guy accessing your data, time to secure yourself. ExpressVPN offers a great solution to encrypt your internet connection and hide your location. This can even be used to access content that isn't normally available in your country. Now personally, I use ExpressVPN whenever I access public Wi-Fi, so some hacker schlub can't steal my information, and also to keep Big Brother from watching everything I do. So if you're interested in checking out a super fast and easy to use VPN, check out expressvpn.com slash lostbits and get 3 months free when signing up. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring and supporting me as a creator. And with all of that said, grab some rings, it's time to dive into some more prototype lost bits. Alright, first let's start off with the second prototype that was dumped. This one is labeled as version 0.51 and has a build date of June 21st, 1993, placing it between the prototypes of May 13th and July 12th of that same year that have been previously dumped. Now this build is definitely further along than the previous 510 and 513 prototypes, as it is the first prototype to include playable special stages, and now the levels are mostly complete. So it is also the first build that can be beaten without using cheats or the debug mode. Let's get into some of the bigger changes this build has from the final game. One of my favorite differences are the UFOs from the special stages. These Orby guys look nothing like they do in the final game but these are the same ones that were seen in some very early screenshots. And while we're talking about the special stages, there are a few more oddities here. The special stage in this prototype doesn't contain any rings or other objects yet, the oil slicks don't function, and the water in the stage causes some glitchy graphics and can even result in a permanent black screen of death. Now even though there aren't any rings here, the ring counter increases every 3 frames, so I guess the developers repurposed it as a frame counter of sorts. And finally, probably the biggest difference is that Sonic doesn't auto-run in this stage like he does in the final game. Instead, Sonic will only run if you press B, and on the flip side, pressing down will slow Sonic. Being able to stop and turn around and such honestly would have made the special stages feel way different in my opinion. While this prototype was being streamed by the Hidden Palace when it was first revealed, many viewers were pointing to some audio problems. These include the audio not looping as well as it should, as well as some of the tracks being desynchronized, resulting in the music just sounding uncomfortable. While there are a few more small differences, like this build using a higher quality CD audio track when time traveling, which was changed again for the final version, the only other major differences from the final game here are the blue ring and clock power-ups. As you might remember from the original Sonic CD Lost Bits, this clock power-up goes unused in the final game, and its purpose was to freeze time for a bit. Although again, just like in the other prototypes, it still doesn't work the way it should, but at least it still freezes things like the waterfall here. Now while the clock works the same as in other previous builds, the one unique difference in this one is with the blue rings. In previous builds, the blue ring monitor would result in the same effects as the S monitor, which granted increased speed as well as invincibility. However, in this prototype, the blue ring monitor now just gives Sonic an invisible shield. Interestingly, this shield can also be stacked with a normal shield to give Sonic some double protection. And that's basically all the noteworthy stuff from that prototype, so let's now move on to the big one. The other prototype of Sonic CD, er, CD Sonic, that was dropped has a build date of December 4th, 1992. 
placing it to be currently the earliest known prototype of the game. This build is labeled as version 0.02. This prototype was apparently put together so the game could be shown off at the Yusei Sega World event that was held in Tokyo on December 6th to commemorate the release of Sonic 2, which had just released a few weeks prior. To put this in perspective, before this one, the earliest known prototype was a build from May of 1993, so this one is more than five months before that one. So what changes does this very early prototype have? Does it contain the elusive missing R2 stage? Let's find out. Okay, so get this. This prototype of Sonic CD was so early in development that it only has two playable stages available. Palm Tree Panic Acts 1 and 2. And at this point, it wasn't even called Palm Tree Panic yet. Instead, it was called Salad Plain. Yeah, Plain Salad. Really great name for Zone. Totally doesn't sound like something I'd order at a restaurant. Anyways, we'll get back to Ordinary Colts Law in a second, but first I want to talk about this Time Attack mode menu. It's very basic looking, and again, only the first two acts of Salad Plain are selectable. That said, the cool thing here is that currently this is the only prototype that explicitly shows off the famous deleted level R2 without having to use a level select cheat code, as usually the game just skips over the second zone. I go over the R2 mystery in more depth in this video, which I will link here, so if you want to learn more about it, be sure to give it a watch. Anyways, regardless, unfortunately R2 still isn't playable in this build. And since it isn't playable here or in the next prototype, then it seems the only place it might be found is in a build dated between these two. So I guess the R2 mystery remains. And speaking of the level select, although it's not normally seen, it still can be accessed by fiddling around with the game's code. That said, selecting anything but the first option will just instantly take you back to the time attack menu, so nothing really crazy there. Alright, let's get back to good old Salad Plain. Although the layout is generally similar to that of the final version of Palm Tree Panic, there are still quite a few differences. For starters, while time travel to the past and bad future are present, it is normally impossible to go to the good future. Interestingly enough though, the level files for good future are still present and can be accessed by messing around with the game's code. It's pretty clear why this wasn't included yet, it's obviously not ready at all. Additionally, even if you do manage to access the good future version of the act in this build, the music still defaults to that of the past timeline, despite again the good future music existing in the files, and it even plays when you beat both playable stages here and see the coming soon screen. This prototype also has several unused objects that were given the axe. These include these basic-looking, tilting platform objects, this incredibly glitchy swinging platform that is thought to be an early version of the one seen in Tidal Tempest, this strange floating waterfall set of platforms which were seen in later prototypes, and last but certainly not least, this very weird object that causes the level to completely deform? I really have no idea what the intended use for this could have been, and its effect makes me feel... not that comfortable, but I guess it could have made an interesting gimmick if it were to unblock a secret ending in the act or something. Big shoutouts to both Nat the Porcupine and PixoPoxoT for hacking these objects in and uploading this footage respectively. I'll link the full videos below for ya if you want to see more. Next up, if you've played Sonic CD, you may remember that if you left Sonic idle for 3 minutes, he will say, I'm out of here, and jump off screen, which resulted in a game over regardless of how many lives you had left. Well, that sequence also exists here. Kinda. First off, the animation sequence is quite different, but even after the jump, you can just tell it's incomplete. Camera movement doesn't seem right, you don't get a game over, and even better, Sonic still keeps all of his rings when he respawns. I guess at this stage in development, the devs were still working on how they wanted to implement this gimmick. Also in this build, Sonic lacks his peelout animation, and the time travel sequence is visually very basic and sounds... different from the final game. Oh yeah, the black and white Sonic Death Sprite is of course once again found left unused in this build. Surprise, surprise. And on top of all of this, there are several other strange things in this prototype. 
You can't pause the game at all, and pressing start on a second controller will spawn a second flashing Sonic, which can then be controlled by that second player. What's weird though is that in this two player mode, if player 1 dies, the flashing Sonic will then become the player 1, but is still controlled by the second controller. And then whoever's controller is plugged into the first player slot will become player 2. It's really strange. And since Sonic CD was largely built off of programming from the original Sonic the Hedgehog for the Genesis, here we still see many remnants from it, such as the speed cap on Sonic, as well as some glitches, such as the one where he just falls through everything while standing on a falling platform. My absolute favorite thing though, is that if you charge up a payload for about 21 seconds, you can basically clip right to the end of the stage. Take that, speed cap. And those were most of the bigger, noteworthy changes seen in the latest dump of Sonic CD prototypes. I always love diving into these pre-release versions and seeing how they have changed over the course of the game's development. The Hidden Palace has also recently dumped some new Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 prototypes, so expect videos on them in the near future. Once either is made, I'll link a card up here at the top right of your screen. Once again, a huge shout out to the Cutting Room Floor and the Hidden Palace for sharing these awesome prototypes with us. Anyways guys, that will be it for this video and I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you did, be sure to slap a like down below and check out my other Lost Bits videos by clicking on the card right here. Also, be sure to swing by my other social media things, which are all linked below, and if you want to support the channel, check out my snazzy merch over at tetrabitgaming.com, or consider becoming the latest member of the Bit Club. Click on the join button below for more information. Anyways guys, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.